welcome to today's 3D print. Know what I got here? New toy. <laughs> we like new toys. This was sent to me by Gearbest. Um, I guess they liked my performance and he said, would you like another printer? And he gave me a list of printers. And I picked this one. No condition for anything, just said pick one. I was like, yeah, I picked this one. <laughs> so we get to open a new toy tonight. Today, whenever. I don't know when you're watching this. So, let's have fun. I don't even remember the exact name of it. I picked this printer because um, I had to balance a couple of things. One, a printer I could use. A printer I would like. Because I want to actually use it. I mean, I mean, I don't care if it's popular if I can't use it. Like, I mean, I could have gotten an i3 Mega, but I can't really use an i3 Mega. It's, it's got a smaller print volume than my duplicators. Plus, everybody's already done it. I want something new. I want something neat. I want something that I have with my smaller audience a better opportunity to be useful to both me and you. And I also love the fact that it uses the... Uh, I guess what I'm going to call the Creality build structure, because <laughs> Creality invented it. They, they're the first ones who used it, so they should get credit for it. Um, it uses the V-rails and the V-rails wheels, at least that's what it looks like. And it's got a decent print volume. It's actually 220 cubed, 220 by 220 by 220, which is pretty cool. So it's I3 size, but a little bit bigger. Usually you get, like, a, the duplicator is 200 by 200 by 180. So this is 220, 220, 220, at least if it's if it follows the specs. So we shall see. I am paid for doing this um, indirectly. I don't, they didn't give me any money and say here, do this printer, but they did give me the printer. And this thing's worth $275. So that means they paid me $275. They just gave it to me in the form of a printer. And I'm okay with that. If I don't like it, you'll know it. If I think it's good, you'll know it. If I think it can be made good, even if it's not so great for viewing, you'll know. I get cool stuff. You get to watch cool stuff. I get to make cool videos. This is built similar to the Ender. It has metal components attached, metal extrusions attached to acrylic components like the Ender. But it's got the acrylic base and then you attach them, aluminum extrusions to that. Um, I have only seen a picture of this on their site, so I'm really not very familiar. I have no idea what I'm getting into here. So, you are going to discover it with me, and we are going to have fun doing it. Because I love building a new printer. This is supposed to be largely assembled, so there's not a whole lot of assembly that you need to do. I am already seeing something I do not like, but it is thick. So, we'll see how it works out. I see an acrylic Y carriage plate, and I really do not like that particular component being acrylic. Mm, it is stiff enough, but I worry about it cracking over time because it is got the, the V wheels on the extrusion attached to it, so that's pressure, and it's got the adjustment knobs, which is more pressure. So we'll see. Oh, interesting. I believe this will be my first E3D V6 knockoff. It's got that round heatsink thing like the E3D does. Looks like it has cooling for the hot end and a dedicated parts cooling fan. 3D printing that looks pretty good. We'll get more into that in a moment. Let's see, how else do I get into here? Power cord. Looks like a decent enough cord. Your typical C13. Thank you to one of my viewers for telling me the name of that one. I believe I see the feeder portion of the extruder. Yep, stepper, all metal. That's nice. Ooh, nice and stiff, too. The gear looks decent, too. Oh, that looks nice. Is that acrylic? I think... Yeah, big thick acrylic plate, but metal. Um, actually, that's metal. Yes, that's aluminum. That's aluminum, all metal. But the plate for how it attaches to the printer is acrylic. 
looks thick enough. That's not under load, so it should be fine. As long as the actual base and gantry are metal, that's what's important. Because those are the parts that want to wiggle. And we don't want them to wiggle. Oh, interesting. I believe this will be my first printer with exposed hardware where it's just it's hanging out in the air like that. It's kind of cool looking. As long as you protect yourself from the mains power, which I'm not too worried about. It just means this is not a good beginner kit um, for somebody who's not experienced with DIY. Because you don't want to give this to a kid and that. Okay. They do look like they are all, all covered, but you, that is mains power there. So do be aware of that and use caution. Fire beware. Use your brain. That's all. Looks like the 12 volt out comes straight up here and plugs in. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I kind of like it. It's kind of cool to have something all out in the open like that. I think it's neat. I'll just build an enclosure for that bottom part for the stuff the mains power. I'll say when there's a cat going in there and going, yeah, sick. <laughs> Eight lives left. Okay, here is the bottom. Okay, not bad, not bad. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder why I did that. Oh, that's probably where it mounts. Looks like they're using 2040. It's got this notch cut out of it. I'm guessing there is a cross beam that will sit like this. Well, that is not interesting. Um, and while I do not like the acrylic heat bed, I do like the fact that it is very, very thick. So hopefully it will not be prone to warping. It is definitely prone to jumping. If you watch carefully, you can actually see that nut turning as I do that. So, um... Nice tight springs, but I'm probably going to want to use stiffer springs in the long run. But otherwise, not bad. And these nuts are a bit small to be comfortable to use, but that's okay. This is a cheap printer. Looks like the Y motor is already mounted. Belt is already installed and tensioned. It seems fine to me. How's the wheels? Well, they, it's not wobbling, but they do need to be tightened up. Can they be tightened up? They might not be able to be tight. Oh, well, they are turning. There's no wobble, but that one wheel doesn't want to turn. It's like, I can free spin it just a little bit. Hmm. I wonder how you tighten it. I don't see concentric nuts. So they might be fixed position. If the acrylic holds, this is fine. If the acrylic doesn't hold, this is not fine. Because if, if these acrylic holes start widening, this is going to start getting looser. Not a bad thing, just not a great thing. We shall see, but otherwise the bed is not wobbling, it's not twisting, it's not jerking around. It seems nice and stable. This is the first time I'm seeing this too, so we shall learn together. <laughs> oh, I wish more printers would do this full-size SD card slot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Full-size SD card slot. Button feels good. It's just your typical screen. I want to peel the plastic with me. Everybody seems to get a, a thing for peeling the plastic. So, let's peel the plastic. Faster toy. Uh-oh. Oh, it's just this nut here. For mount, the hammer nut just fell off. Like you never like to see loose parts. It's just a little too loose. So this is obviously going to mount to one of the rails since it has hammer nuts. Alrighty. Ooh, nice tool set. Oh, that's interesting. It's got that A-net screwdriver, the one they have. It's got a little pair of plastic tweezers, some pretty nice looking side nippers, flush nippers, and sadly the shorty Allen keys, but that's okay. I got spoiled by those longer Allen keys. Uh, that is an end stop switch. I'm guessing this is cabling for the LCD screen, your Bowden tube, some wiring. Oh yeah. So this must be the wiring harness that goes to the uh, from this. It looks like we have to plug all this in. That goes from this 
to all your steppers and limit switches. Power is already wired up. It's already plumbed for power, but you've got to plug in the cabling, which is fine. And they do include a one gigabyte Kingston SD card. I'll just replace that with a 32 gig. And um, I also like the fact that it uses a full-size AB USB cable instead of that little mini USB cable. I suspect that my problem with the Octopi on my CR10 is a floozy USB cable, USB connection issue. These are a lot more stable. They're a lot more um, stiff, rigid, stable, and reliable. All printers should use that cable. Uh, screw this micro mini crap. Use a normal normal AB cable. It's just more reliable. Oh, now isn't that interesting? It comes with the little <laughs> the decorative insert tubing like the CR10 does, but they don't install it. They just give it to you in case you want to install it. Great. Saves me from having to remove it. <laughs> okay, we are getting down to the last part here. Oh, interesting. This uses a single Z. Like the um, the CR10 does. I wonder what this is. I don't know what that is. Huh. Oh, that's... It's just like that. I wonder what that is. Guess we'll find out. Um, this construction looks good. It's thin, but metal. And is it concentric? I do not see a concentric on that either. But I do see a proper isosceles. Is it isosceles or equilateral? It might be equilateral. I see a proper equilateral triangle here. So this should be stable. And hey, Anet. Come here, Anet. Anet, you watching? I want you to pay attention to this. X axis, hot end mount. Equilateral triangle. This one won't rock. Look at that. Solid. No wiggle. No rocking. Nothing. That is rock solid. That's the way it should be. Same thing down here. Equilateral triangle. That's how it should be done. I like the fact that the triangle brace is also the stepper motor mount. Can you see that? Yep. I like that. That's nice. That should mean that... um. This is very nice, rigid, safe, stable. Meaning, I don't think this is going to have any Z-axis issues. Um, this is a 3D printed part, but as with other printers, it is simply the guide for the threaded rod. The, is this a third? No, this looks like a regular... This is a lead screw, I believe. Yes, yes, normal lead screw. Um, so, um... This is just a guide. It's not a load-bearing part. It doesn't matter. All the important bits are metal. The framing for the mounts. Ooh, that popped off. Um, the triangle braces are um, metal. The important high-load one has metal on both sides. So you have a metal plate here and a metal plate here. A sandwich with the wheels in the middle. This one here is not under a heavy load, so it just sits there. The belt also... Um, ties into the same metal plate. So this is well designed. I like this. And it does not look like any of them are concentric. So I guess they're set from the factory. So it's a good thing that they're metal. Um, I don't think this is 20. Is this 1010? Hmm, it's, it's V slot. That's all I care about. This feels stiff. There's no flex. None whatsoever. This is holy shit. <laughs> that really is stiff. Wow. I suspect we're going to get good quality prints out of this, assuming the hot end's good, because um, most printing problems come from sloppy hardware. So if these bits all move nice and smooth, yeah, that feels good. You're going to want to watch your end here, because it is possible to go off the end and... Um, Although it doesn't jump, it, it stays there once it goes off the end. So you're going to want to make sure you set your dimensional limits correctly. I don't see no weird rubbing. Looks good. 
Feels good. This seems to be nice and smooth and stable. Moving the Z up and down. So while I don't exactly, I'm not exactly thrilled by the power mounting and board mounting, this is solid. This makes me happy. So how does this attach? Oh, I bet this little bugger goes right in here like this. It locks in just like that. Yep, there you go. That's the basic gist of your printer right there. Isn't that neat? Okay, that's pretty cool. Although I'm guessing this goes the other way. No, it goes this way because the, the hot end will mount right here. Okay, that's pretty neat. Nifty. I like that. I like cooler designs. Now, I, whether it's good or not, we'll, we'll find out. But it's a cool looking design. Hmm, I don't know that. Shut up, Alexa. You want no cool design as a bitcha. Right. Well, there is something I did notice. No instructions. I mean, I know it's a cost-saving thing, but how much can you really save by not including some instructions with the printer? It would, it would just be nice not to have to go to the SD card to get the instructions. I mean, we all know that's what you got to do. You go to the SD card to get instructions, but even just a piece of paper saying, hey, the instructions are on the SD card. Go load the SD card to see the instructions. Although I do notice that because it comes with a full-size SD card, it does not include a reader. I mean, I have plenty of readers, but still, I'm kind of curious. These are just printer bits. They are labeled Zone Star B2 3D printer parts. Although this doesn't have very many parts. B1 printer parts. No label on this one, but it's kind of self-explanatory. USB cable on SD card. Okay. I'm going to pause for a moment while I go read this SD card. Okay, got the basics. The SD card is a little weird. It's um, a zip file. And what you would normally see on the SD card is in the zip file. So you actually have to unzip the zip file first. Uh, that might be tricky for new users, especially without a print and instruction manual. I was thinking at first maybe they should include a self-extracting zip file, but then I thought, hmm, China, EXE, SD card? Nah, stick with the zip file. <laughs> so they'll have to get past that, but um, I suspect anybody willing to build a 3D printer kit isn't going to have too much trouble figuring out how to unzip a file. If you are, maybe you shouldn't be buying a 3D printer. By the way, I just realized that the box actually does say what the name of the company is. It's Zone Star. And there's a check mark next to Z5. So this is the FZ5, the Zone Star FZ5 printer. Because um, there's otherwise there's no labeling. I, I, I just saw the name of the company in the, the video. It includes a video for how to build it. And um, I just noticed, and the video actually explains how hammer nuts work. That's good. A lot of others don't explain that. So, um, I noticed the name was Zone Star, and then I looked up and saw the box I chucked over there, and it said Zone Star. I just assumed that that was a box and the printer was inside. I didn't realize that was the actual box as it came from the manufacturer. So, I am probably not going to need any of this except for the Allen keys. So, I'm going to take the Allen keys out of here and put it aside. This is like the same screwdriver that the ANET come with, uh, at least the one ANET that I got, and apparently the A8 also comes with this, so as a Zone Star printer comes up with a screwdriver. A pair of plastic tweezers, they're, I mean they're plastic, but they're actually pretty nice. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I wish they were flatter there, so it comes to a point, and what it needs is to be flat, so that you can reach in there and grab that filament when it gets uppity with you. And then the, the snips are pretty nice. I actually like these. Play-Doh. Hmm. I like them. They, they feel good. They're nice. Um, I don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. Well, I probably will need that, actually. I'll put these over here for now. To clear up some workspace. 
And I gotta watch I don't knock over this battery pack, which is powering the little reaction camera. Um, I will need this, but later. So I'm gonna put this over here. I do not need this, but it is a good Ziploc bag, so I'll be keeping the Ziploc bag. The tools of the trade. Boy, if you have enough 3D printers, you're going to have so many Allen keys lying around, it's, it'll boggle the mind. It's like, you're just going to have zillions of them. Um, so we don't need this yet. This is the power core. This is the hot end. I do not see any screws in there. So where are my screws? There are screws that go into this. And they are not in here. They must be in here. Ah, yes, there they are. Bowden tube with compression connection on. I will probably be shortening that because it looks way too long. I might even just preemptively replace that since it's probably the incorrect size, but I'll check it. LCD connection. Feet for the bottom of the printer. Bits and parts. I like the nice little short clear zip tie. That's nice. I really like how stupidly stiff this gantry is. That is one of the best designed gantries I've seen in a while. It's stiffer than a CR-10, but that's only because it's one-third the size of the CR-10. <laughs> Actually, about one-quarter, because if you're half on both dimensions, you're one-quarter the size. So it's, it's a lot easier. It's like it's like the reason the Ender 2 prints so much better than the CR-10, because it's so much smaller. The smaller you get, the easier it is to hold tolerances. The bigger you are, the more inertia you have, the more mass you have. The more a, a, a 0.1 millimeter deviation on the Ender 2 is nothing, while a 0.1 millimeter deviation on the CR-10 might result in a failed print. So the fact that the CR-10 is as good as it is is a miracle. It's, 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 a, it's an amazing printer. Okay, they look all the same except for a couple of AB ones. Okay, I am going to pause you again because I've got to figure out this is not symmetrical. Everything is symmetrical except this F and this slot here, which means I got to figure out which way is top and which way is bottom because it does not tell me. One moment. It actually comes with a pretty decent PDF instruction manual. It never actually tells me which way, but clearly, um, based on the manual, the point is toward you and the cutout is right. So, do I want to leave the paper on or take it off? It looks pretty without it, so I'll take it off. Although I understand these are fun to peel. Let's see how much trouble this gives me. reasonably pain-free so far. Don't go too fast. I just learned that. It is very thin paper. Trash can? 
Yay, swish! I only got one eye, so I have no death perception, so that's pretty good. I was actually born blind. No vision at all. It took 17 operations. I was less than a year old, so I don't remember any of it. It took 17 operations before they can fix my right eye. I, I, don't, see, I don't even know what they did. And um, they couldn't fix the left eye. The, the eye itself is fine. The USB cable's broken. So and they can't fix USB cables in your brain yet. The optic nerve going from the eye to the brain is malformed, so the eye works fine and the cortex works fine. There's just no data being transferred to the USB cable. Because it's broken! But, the only thing I can't do is be a fighter pilot or a brain surgeon, and I can't see 3D movies. That kind of sucks. I watch a 3D movie and it's just a headache-inducing nightmare because... I don't have the second eye to filter out the other double image created by the 3D effect. So the whole movie looks like a double image to me and there's no 3D effect. Yeah, if you go slow it comes off nice. Not a problem. Almost got it off without pairing, but all came off clean. Okay, so it looks like I will need to install the feet. I don't know where though. So I think I'll actually wait to do that until I see where all the bolts end up going. So this is going to install right here like that and um, you use the capture nuts to do that the hammer nuts so one two so three of them looks like three I love building stuff like this. I mean, I can't do a full-on kit like an Ana A8. I don't. I just don't have sufficient time for that. You know, hey, maybe a few years from now, if I'm doing this full time, I'll do a nostalgia build of an Ana A8. <laughs> but um, otherwise, I need my printers to be largely assembled because I just don't have sufficient time to be dorking around assembling a printer. Too much reflection off of the ends of the rod to see it. They don't want to pull out, so I'm going to assume they're in there. 
Alrighty, next part of the video. I'm just going to follow the instructions. Oh, there's where my feet go. It actually shows you. Okay, one front and back. Hmm. Actually, there's a couple extra holes here, but they don't show. And I don't want to cover those holes up in case I need them, so I'm going to wait on that. Okay. Next step. Install the printer platform. And the printer platform does go behind as I suspected. It's just two? It is just two. I would have thought it would have needed more than that. So, one here. That way. This is self aligning since it's crossing over the other member, so it can only go in one position. You can't really put it on crooked. Those definitely turned. Okay. It is starting to look like a printer. Uh, cool. Okay. Next step. Controller box. Right hand side facing the pulley. It goes forward? Really? So while the main box is exposed, you do not have to touch it. You don't have to wire up the main power box here. It is all pre-wired. It is a switch. It does not appear to be fused. It does have a power on-off switch, but I do not see a fuse. Inline fuse? Nope. But power is pre-wired. So this is all wired up. You don't have to touch that. And it does use crimp connections, so there is no direct exposure unless you stick your fingers in there. And the cable is plugged into the board. And this simply goes here. Just like that. So, of course, we need nuts. I have three holes. But it's only showing two. Okay, only the two line up. And the one is adjustable. This is not going to work, or is it? Maybe. These didn't quite look like they might be, not be long enough, but they might work. Trust the manufacturer. Trust the manufacturer! That one goes 
that way. Interesting, the power wire and switch are on the front. That's kind of an interesting way of doing it. This one hammer nut doesn't quite want to turn all the way. I'm going to have to assist it. There we go. Now it's turned. does not want to tighten up. That's a different kind of screw. I think I'm using the wrong screw here. here. Thank you. Is that the same screw? No, it is different. I wonder why that one screw is different. That's better. There we go. That one screw is different. I don't know why. Okay. So, the basics are getting there. This next part concerns me a bit because I can't see it working. That's why there's no metal plate on the back of here because this mounts to here. Sure, I get this. Hang on a second, I wanna. This looks weird. That's exactly what I thought that was, and there's no way in hell that's gonna work. <laughs> At least not for full-size spools. This is the filament holder. What the hell? I just can't see that working. 
Well, I guess we'll see. But apparently, that's it. And then this, quite literally, is your ribbon holder. I just can't see that working. I can't see this holding a kilogram spool of filament without this breaking. I guess we're going to find out. My gut tells me they sell little tiny spools of filament and it's made to hold those. Because I don't see this surviving a kilogram spool. I'll try it, but that seems sketch. Ultra sketch, mega sketch. Dude, super sketchy. It is stiff. need this longer cable since um the feeder is not mounted on the X gantry it's mounted on the frame what I'll probably end up doing is slapping a hick top spool holder right there on top this I don't know about that and it seems sketchy to me Uber sketchy. That won't work. There we go. That'll work. Looks better. How's about we try the Sakura Pink? Why not? I just want to see if this will even hold the spool. <laughs> Any new stickers? Nah, same ones you always get. Hoping for something new. Yeah, that doesn't even work. Nope. So that was made for spools like this. It was made for little spools. Not big spools. Where did I stick that little spool? There it is. So, thank you, Creality, for the little sample spool. Because <laughs> that's all that's going to go on there. Even that doesn't fit right. <coughs> but it's captive, at least. Hmm. See, there's a little flex there. That's not enough to be a problem, but... You're definitely going to want to not lean on this because you'll be tweaking that acrylic. Okay. Let's see. Where do they want this? 
Feet are on the right, pan on the left. Oh, let's get this off. It's annoying peeling this paper off the acrylic. But I guess if they didn't do that, it would come all scratched up and nasty and people would be upset. Boo hoo, my acrylic is scratched. As if it's going to stay on scratch for very long. I think that's the wrong way. One on the back side. Really? Hey, you. Come here. I'm not sure if I'm going to follow those instructions. In fact, I don't think I am. That seems wrong. Oh, so she's over here. 
and the motor is forward like this. Hold on a second, this seems backwards. Now I understand what they're doing and it does make sense. This is not supposed to be all the way up here. This is supposed to be down here. And then this is backwards. I see what they're doing now. Actually, it does make sense if you're using this little tiny spool holder. It does make sense. I'll show you what they're talking about in a minute. Poor instructions. Well, actually, the instructions are good. I kind of ignored them. So that wasn't really the instructions fault. I kind of jumped ahead. The idea here is that this sits like this. Good. Okay. The idea behind this is that this sits here and the filament comes cleanly up into the extruder assembly like that no interference from anything and then this now sitting on top of here like this has a nice clean loop straight into this. And the idea is what did I hit? Uh -huh, something's in the way. Aha. Uh -huh. This needs to go away. I don't even know why they have this on here. There we go. There we go. No touch. All right. So the idea is that needs a little lubing. But this now has a clear loop down to here, like this, to your hot end. See? Now there's nothing to get in the way and kink this tube, even as it raises up like this. So that's that's actually a good idea. They did a good job on that. Give me credit, good design. Okay. Alrighty, I believe we are just about at the point of wiring. First, hot in. make my life easier by raising it up this is gonna go do not like it at all okay. I think 
going over the hot end, it's an ugly ass brick surrounding the um the nozzle. It's it's got that E three D V six kind of look going for it. Um, the fan is just hitting this, but it can also impact the nozzle. That is one of the smallest heat block bricks I've ever seen. I like that. I could see redesigning this for sequential printing on other printers. That would work really well. It's a really, really tiny... See, my finger can cover it. That's a really tiny little heat block and heater cartridge. Get rid of this stupid shell and use an E3D style fan mount with a slimmer duct for this fan. And you could make this whole thing way smaller. Way, way smaller. Hmm. That's cool. It's got potential. This mounting method is also interesting. I always have a hard time hanging on to Allen keys. I don't know why. Bad fingers. Or just my fingers are huge. Any failures yet? Keeping an eye on my Stargate over there. So that just latches in just like that. It's got um, keyhole sockets. So where you have the bigger hole with the slot at the bottom, so you put it in a bigger hole and it slides into place. And there's a three-point contact there, and then you just tighten them up. It's actually, it's actually a pretty novel attachment method. I do like that. It's probably why they went with the big block, even though I don't like the big block probably exactly why they did it, although that's not good. Where when you tighten it, it wants to push itself out, so you got to make sure you hold it until it actually grabs. But, in general, that's a pretty novel mounting method. I do kind of like it, even though it's bulky. Most people aren't doing sequential prints like I do, so they don't really care whether it can do it or not. That's just a me thing. So I won't hold that against the printer. I'm guessing this is going to come straight through here like that. And then your PTFE tube installs just like that. There we go. Now this can slide back and forth without any interference to the PTFE tube. That's actually pretty good. Uh, I like that. I'll make sure these are tight while I'm here. Yeah, they're tight. QC is a lot better. They did a pretty decent job of, you know, everything seems to be tight, seems to be in well positioned and put together decently. I don't like that play. And that play is coming from, I think, the acrylic. I don't know. But I don't think it'll have any play while it's printing. I think that's just... I can put a lot more force on it than the printer can. Oh yeah, this one. Okay. I believe we are getting to the end of physical construction. There's now nothing else for me to install on the bottom, so there are just extra holes here that you don't need. Interesting. This loosened up on me. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Oh, there's going to be feet, it doesn't matter. Why won't this tighten up? This just doesn't want to tighten up. There it goes. Just took a little more coaxing. No, oh, it came loose again. That bigger screwdriver. There we go. Hmm. There we go, a little better. Alright, feetsies. So, one here. Ooh, be nice. Come on, 
bottom or at the top. And then here. Guess they're put here. Okay. That's nice and sturdy. Okay. It's a pity they had to use acrylic in these two positions because it's such a nice strong frame. This is crazy rigid, but it moves. See how this moves? Yeah, see that wiggles all over the place. I mean, it's probably not going to move while printing. Let me show you that from the side. This ridiculously rigid frame wiggles because the acrylic wiggles, so it wiggles. The actual acrylic bending, not the frame. So they need to. What I would do if you're going to stick with the acrylic, then you need to use the corner braces like the ender uses and brace this beam to this beam because these two beams aren't actually connected they're, they're not attached to each other they're both attached to the acrylic and so it can this flexes because it's only attached to the acrylic this flexes because it's only attached to the acrylic but if they bound the two together using those corner even just two of them one here and one here binding it inside here so that these two this extrusion and this extrusion were bound together I believe that would greatly stiffen this entire structure I think it's gonna be fine for printing I mean let's try to go high speed but um, I think that would have been a whole lot better had they included some I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some some corner braces on these corners with hammer nuts to lock this frame together and I'm going to do that, and I'm betting you it's going to really stiffen this up nice. If it does, I'll send the company a letter to let them know that that would be a really, really cheap way. Because I bet you those components are one or two cents a piece over in China. So it would be a very cheap way for them to greatly stiffen up this entire structure. Let's see. I believe we are done construction, and that we should now go to um, wiring. Let's find out. Okay, it is time to wire. This actually does look like it's capable of being upgraded. They have upgrades to add a dual extruder, which I might actually do if I like the print quality, because I've never got to play with a dual extruder before. It's already preset up for you. Just I guess you just buy the components and you can stick it in there. Or laser engraving, and you can add proximity sensor for bed leveling and filament runout. It uses the Y and Z positive connections. There's two extra connections to do that. So, can I set this up so that you can see what I'm doing? Yes, I think I can. Hang on. Okay, I have a second camera set up so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll just merge the videos together, but they won't be overlaid. They'll just that one will play, then this one will play, then that one will play. So that one's not recording right now because I'm not going to do that kind of editing. A couple of things I don't like is I don't like the fact that this end stop here is sticking out the side right here. Although it shouldn't get in the way of anything as long as you use the zip ties to hold it in place. It, it would have been pretty easy for them to shift that, aim it up, aim it down, anything besides have it straight toward the bed. Just, you know, it's begging to be snagged on. Let's see here. I might as well start with what's easily available. This is all plugged in, no it's not. Stepper motor is unplugged here. And then end stop is plugged in. Okay. This will run over to here. Alrighty. So what was this again? It looks like I'm using the negatives for all of these. So this is 
y motor, so this will go into y negative for the end stop, and this will go into y motor. Um, I don't see the markings. Ah, of course, they're hidden over here. Oh, I can't see them. Y motor. Okay, so this is X. Z. Extruder. So X, Z, and extruder. Okay. Let's hook up what's already attached, I guess. So... What is the proper way to route this? Let me consult their thing. I want to see where I'm supposed to run this. Okay, a very critical part of this printer's construction is not discussed in the manual or in the video. It's glossed over or just not mentioned at all. But installing this is critical because this has to move up and down in Z and it has to move left and right on the gantry. Why is that so hard to move now? It's not plugged in. I guess it's okay. I think it's a cruddy bearing that's using a couple of washers. I might replace that. I don't like that. Seems kludgy. But, um, this needs to be able to move all the way over to here without this getting all messed up. And where the hell does this go? Oh, I bet you this is the extruder. Yeah, that's the extruder. Oh! And see, now, all you have to do is explain that. The connection to the extruder motor holds that up. That, okay, that works. So now, this is free to flop here, and I can actually run it along the, the Bowden tube, like you do all the other printers. Okay, now it's making sense. Now, why isn't that in the instructions? I mean, they don't even show a picture of it. The picture of this shows this without any wires going to the extruder. Okay. Now we're making sense. Come on, Chinese manufacturers, get it together. Write good instruction manuals. You don't have to have good English, but they do need to be complete. They need to show me what I need to do. And this is a pretty important part of what I need to do. <laughs> okay, and now this can run straight down to that. Now it's making a little more sense. Okay. Fan two. Fan two. Fan. Somebody said it's fan one. Okay. This is thermistor. That would be this connection here. You guys see what I'm doing here? Okay. So now it's like fan one and fan two connect here, and a the thermistor connection is here. This is our heat bed. Looks like it is not stripped.
there it goes. You just push up on it. This looks like the heater cartridge. This should have already been stripped for a kit that purports to be 99% or 90% assembled. I'd have liked to have seen this already done. Some scissors. Maybe younger people with smaller fingers and whatnot. This won't be a problem, but this is all in my way. So I'm gonna. Seems like decent quality wire. Nice and pliable. It's not like brittle. Again, as I said in the other video, which you haven't seen yet, but you will have seen before you see this, so I guess you have seen it. Temporal mechanics is fun. Um, this is going to be... Basically, think of this as a live stream, but I didn't actually stream it. <laughs> But it'd be like a, a live stream. You missed it. You missed the live stream. You see that? Now you got to watch the playback of the live stream. Isn't it amazing how high a quality this playback is? It's a 1080p live stream. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you get the idea. Okay. Time to flip this around. I do already know that the first one, this is the power connection. I want to make sure it's tight. Okay. I know that this one is heat bed. And this one is the heater cartridge. Seems like a good connection. Seems like a good connection. Alright, that's all taken care of. And this will come down here. And I could probably... This does not move and will never move. So I can probably zip tie that to that. Oh, maybe not. Oh, he's two of them. I like neat wires. And wires that don't move. So now that will stay put. Less likely for this to get yanked and pull on these wires, which you really would not want. And this is the E motor. I believe it's Z then E. I'll double check that before I power up. They do have heat sinks on the stepper drivers, it looks like. 
Alright. And this needs to go through here like this. This needs to come down here like that and get out of my way. I am going to reroute this. I'm going to put this behind this. way this will stay out of the way there we go this way that will stay out of the way of this action okay and this will eventually be probably run along these here it looks like there's like little openings where I can run zip tie through and hold these wires down and manage them. I'm guessing that's what these little cutouts are for down here. Makes sense at least. Okay, so hot end is plumbed and wired. Extruder is plumbed and wired. And it has an adjustable Z end stop, which is pretty darn cool. That looks like it's going to fall out if I don't tighten it. I'm not sure what this is for. I don't think this is supposed to be loose. Wow. Oh. Oh, that makes the spring stiffer. Okay. That's plenty stiff. LCD screen. Might as well take care of that real quick because it's probably going to run up along this. Boy, they don't give you much wiggle room there, do they? Okay. EDP1 goes to... EXP1. Then 2 goes to two. That's a bit messy, but I do see a way out, maybe? Yeah, under the extruder motor. If I come up here like this, I can slide it underneath the extruder motor inside the top rail here. Yeah, that might actually work. Nice little built-in cable management, even though it probably was not intended to do that. I think I'm going to have to move the screen. A little too far away for that to work. Now it works. There we go. That keeps those wires out of the way. Haunt, but it'll work. Okay. Spool holder sucks. That's junk. Okay, it looks like this is going to come over here. This can't be right. Oh. 
Oh, yes it is. Okay. I see now. Ah, the end stop. Okay. How's it go? Let's find out. Uh, I believe this end stop goes right here and this goes here. So let's find out. Now, they actually had the acrylic backward the switch was on the wrong side, but it doesn't matter. But, um... <laughs> the screw was stronger than the screwdriver. We'll figure. Mm -hmm. Now, what I don't like is that it looks like the, the actual fan grill is the end stop. See? The actual fan itself makes the end stop. But it's infinitely adjustable, so that's not a big deal. So if you decide to change this fan or change this out, you'll have to accommodate, make sure something can touch the end stop, probably the metal frame itself. Not a huge deal, just interesting design choice on their part. And then this motor here. Okay. Then this motor here. See that? Then this end stop. Okay, that takes care of that. I don't have to worry about that getting away. Oh, by the way, one of my screws on my Z motor into the extrusion was loose. Not a big deal, but you know, just be aware of that. Um, oh, I can run it under. I like that. That might be actually why they have that opening there. I can run my wires underneath the bed and underneath this motor to there and attach them to this point here for cable management. There's no place to attach that. I wish there was. I don't want that floating. And I don't want it near the Z-screw and I don't want it near anything else. How's that going to work? So this is just going to flop around when it comes down. So what's going to happen when I get to the bottom? If that thought was going to happen. So maybe I have to go around the outside. So that this stays away from it. But now I don't think I can go all the way up. Okay, there's it all the way down. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the end stop, so I can't go there. Okay. They really need to fix the instructions to give guidance on wire management. There are, is no guidance on wire management, and what to do with the wires, where to put the wires, nothing. <gasps> that needs to be fixed. And that right there is the highest it can go before it begins to interfere. Yeah. Okay, so that works. I am concerned about this. I do not like the way that's wired. I think there should be a little more play in this to allow me to keep this away from the rod. Looks like it'll work, but what they really should have done is this connection should be over here. Okay? Because you've got plenty of points for the end stop to touch. Um, yeah. See, I would have flipped this around. I would have um, flipped that micro switch to the other side. I would have this plug here on this side sticking out here with the micro switch sitting here. That's bad design. Screaming for trouble. Not big trouble, but it's easily avoided trouble. OK. 
Okay. So this is x t x minus and where's z? Z stop. Z minus. Okay, Z motor and X motor. Is it X up top? Let's give you a better view. Yes. And then Z is down here. E, E, Z. here, X motor all the way up here, bit of a stretch, but it does work. Okay. Am I missing anything else? End stop, three end stops are connected. Ah, heat bed. You are right here. This is soldered. So, strain relief might be in order, but, um, it is a soldered connection, not a plug connection, which is a good thing. Pre-crimped. So not a horrible design. I don't know how good it is, but it's not bad. At least I don't think it is. Maybe I better not use my teeth. Since I have a pair of pliers sitting right here. I think I'm going to zip tie that right to this post right here. Come on. Work with me here. Thank you. go. Now, where does the thermistor go? Okay, we'll turn to power heat bed. That's not the board. Oh, yes it is. It's just sideways. Here. Heat bed. What? So A14 and A13. Heat, heat, stir heat, fan, fan. Oh, that's a fan. That's not even... Oh, shit. That can't work.
This looks like it goes there. To A14. But it looks like the temp sensor. I'm guessing it's just mismarked. This is clearly supposed to go here. It's the only place it can reach. And then A14 is the bed. Okay. Well, we'll know pretty quickly. Because <laughs> it'll either work or it won't. Okay. I guess that works. I guess now it's boot up time. Let's see if it blows up in my face or not. <laughs> I never removed the paper. Oh well. I am going to go around and plug this in. Hang on. Power up. It did not explode. That's always a good start. That's a weird noise. Indicate readiness. And something else I noticed, no scraper. Those cheap little punks didn't include a scraper. Cheapos. Oh, it is only a $200 printer. But still, scraper, come on. What would that cost you? Nothing. Or nothing. Either one would be nothing. I don't know what that was. Alright, there is already an error. The heat bed is giving me 21 degrees. So that's working. But I am not getting a read from the... Um, yep, it's warming up with just my hand on it, 22 degrees. But I get a DEF, which I'm assuming is defective. When um, it tries to read the thermistor from the hot end. So I am, something's plugged in wrong. Un turn off. This power jack does not stay in place. I am not thrilled by that aspect of the design. I mean, that's not a deal breaker. It's not a killer. It doesn't destroy the printer, but it's something they should fix. That clearly says fan and fan two. Now what does this say? This is twelve ground. Plus twelve volt ground. This is fan too. You see, I think this needs to come down here, but it can't. Oh, wait a minute. I have it bound up. And that's probably why it can't reach. Yeah, this would be able to reach if I wasn't binding it up. Alright, we will have to take that off. Now, which one do I need? Looks like I need A13, which is, of course, is the bottom one. That is a stretch. Okay. The other one looked like the right connection because of the way I bound up the cable. I think that thermistor connection should be a little longer.
Model Z5 Repetier, it looks like it's using. And I am now getting a reading. Okay. So if I hang on to this. It should heat up. There it goes. Okay. So we are working and it is responding. Let's load some go juice. Some goody stuff. Some printer candy. You know what printer candy is? We all love eating candy. Printers eat plastic, so plastic is printer candy. Never forget to feed your printer printer candy. I hate this being on the back like this. I do not like that. It encourages you to put your hand on top of the gantry here. I'd like to see this turned around 180 degrees. And I just might do that. Because I do not like green eggs and ham, I say. Right there. Come on. Don't be a pest. Just do what you're supposed to do. real sensitive about feeding in. There it goes. Maybe not. It's in there, but it doesn't want to go. That just does not want to feed. Try to back feed it. Well, that's a really nasty feed situation there. I just broke off the filament in there. There it goes. I'm gonna have to work on that. I do not like the way that feeds. It's very rough. It might just be a bad coupler or something. But it took a bit to get that to feed. Printer. Quick settings. Home wall. That works, that works, and that works. That's a slow Z. It's a really slow Z. Da, 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 da. It tells you what it's doing. It says home Z. That's interesting. That one doesn't do that. It just, you know, it just keeps doing what it's doing. Missing one of the wrenches. I'm thirsty.
that cherry pepper. See, now the problem is, I just realized, I can't just tip this printer over to um, level it the way I normally do. Because it will just... That one ran out of power, so now you're stuck with this view. Um, this is very flexible because of the acrylic, I think. So it's using V rail, but it's not using concentric nuts. The springs seem nice. The knobs are hard to turn. There's room for upgrades there, so I'll be upgrading those knobs. I can't do Z yet. low and I don't want to raise the bed anymore so now I will use the adjustable stop. about right that and now I just adjust the z-top to stop until it sits that point like not bad compress these a little more that looks decent that needs more compression big time Take the max. Ooh, that's a real scraper there. Any more compression? Oh, yeah.
tell you this, this printer's going to be a leveling nightmare. Definitely going to be a leveling nightmare. Good. This needs to be tightened up a little more. Looks good. Let's try printing something. Print file. Marvin. Definitely going to need stiffeners for this. That's a little knock against it because this is not rigid enough. While this is rigid relative to its beam, and this thing is crazy rigid, because they are both attached to an acrylic plate and not attached to anything else, they lose their rigidity because what they're attached to flexes doesn't matter how rigid this is if the whole damn thing moves because it's attached to a flexible acrylic plate. Now that doesn't mean you can't use acrylic. What that does mean is that you have to strengthen it. You have to make sure they connect together. All they have to do is put something on here to join this extrusion with that extrusion so that they join together. So when this tries to flex, it's not just pushing against the acrylic, it's pushing against this other aluminum extrusion beam, which would stop it from flexing, at least stop it a lot. So I'll definitely get some of those little things to do that, to do exactly that. We're just heating up now. I want to pause this till it's done heating up. Let's heat it up. Let's see what it does. So raise this one up a little bit. Bring this one down a little bit. Bring this one down a little bit. Bring this one down a little bit. It's going all over the places I'm turning these though. You gotta wait until you release it to see whether your adjustment kicked or not. That looks pretty good. This is my Marvin with a 65 millimeter skirt. I will see what it does. like 0.97 is wrong. I just used my Wanhao 
but um, looks like it's slightly under extruding, just barely. Yeah, looking nice. Quiet. I just realized this thing's really quiet. The steppers are actually a little noisy, but they're um they're it's not the high pitch whine you typically get. It's uh more of a a low low pitch rumble, which is not annoying at all. The power supply fan is powerful and silent. The two fans on the actual hot end, I can't even hear them, and they are both going. This is a quiet machine! Doing a good job so far for just a throw together test. I don't see any stringing. I don't see any glaring zits. I mean, the layers will take the lining up. So I'm going to pause you guys. We're going to wait until it's done the Marvin. And the. Actually, I, I think we're about done. Because you're not going to be able to see much in the action camera. But it is working. And it was surprisingly easy to bed level. As long as you don't touch it. Because if you touch it, this will move. But, um. We'll see. We shall see. We're at 16% of the Marvin. Then I'm going to do a simple vase. And then I'm going to do something large. And we will go from there. And when I do my synopsis video, the video that's not several hours long, <laughs> when we do that video, then I'll show you close-ups of all the parts. But, yeah, it's, it's working. actually working really well so we'll see that's it for the video this is the build unboxing and build and initial print run of the zone star z5f you can get this on gearbest for right around 220 bucks which is not bad considering its volume it's 220 by 220 by 220 so it's actually a pretty big print volume I do have a couple of um, things that annoy me. This is giving me trouble. I'm not sure why. I gotta look at that. It might just be a goofy coupler. Um, the instructions are severely lacking, especially regarding wire management. Um, the diagram for the board looks nothing like the board does here. Uh, unless it's sideways. That might be sideways in the picture. So I may have been looking at it wrong. But the instructions are severely lacking in the aspect of how to run the wires. I had to guess at that. I don't like the way this wire goes around the Z motor. I think they should have moved that connection. Um, the acrylic is very flexible. I do not like that. I do not like green eggs and ham. But um, this part can't really be fixed too easily. Because the, the bed is acrylic. The Y carriage plate. But um, this can all be stiffened up. This is incredibly stiff. This gantry is stupid stiff. Um, but there's no connection between... You have aluminum extrusion here for the Y. And you have aluminum extrusion here for the X. But the two aren't connected. So your two strongest parts of your printer are just sitting here like this. So they can move relative to each other. They need to be locked together. 
Okay, and you do that with those little 90 degree corner braces like we saw in the ender when I was putting the ender together. That's the, that's the reason the ender has those corner braces. So it's not depending on the acrylic for stiffness. This is literally depending on the acrylic for its stiffness and the acrylic isn't stiff. Um, it's fine as they hold everything together. The ender uses it and it works fine. But here they did not take that little extra step and attach the two aluminum extrusions together which would have solved the flexing problem because then when I grab this and push on it instead of it bending the acrylic it would be pushing against the other aluminum extrusion and that's what you want. So, I mean that's an easy fix so I won't call that a printer fail but that's definitely a negative. They should have made that correction. I mean it's, just, it's such a simple thing. Although I guess if they thought it printed good enough as is they would leave it alone but to me, that's not user friendly. User friendly would be to make that correction. So, um, I'm going to play with it. I'm going to make a bunch of prints on it. We will see if it lasts a few days. I will make my initial thoughts, synopsis, build video with a couple of sample prints. And then later on down the road, I will tell you guys how it's going, how it's holding up. It's holding temperatures great. It did take a while to heat up that bed. I question whether it'll get to 100 degrees. I'm going to try it, of course. But um, so far, I don't dislike it. I love this. I don't love this. This power connection is a little hinky. It's not fused. I mean, it switches right there, but still fuses nice. Although I don't know how necessary it is. Um, but you can't pull the plug out without pulling the entire socket out. That's something they should fix. Um, that's it. You guys have a great night. I hope you enjoy the unboxing and build. Um, do I endorse this printer? I don't know. We'll have to see. I never endorse a printer right after I build it. <laughs> Unless I already know what I'm getting into and this is an unknown. I do like how quiet it is. It is very, very quiet. That's impressive. These fans are silent. I don't need to replace a single fan on here. They're all quiet. That's good. I'd like to know where that rumbling is. Is that rumbling because I have resistance somewhere? Or is that rumbling just the nature of being attached to the acrylic base with the rubber feet? I don't know. We'll find out. If I see lots of ringing and ghosting, we'll, we'll know it's resistant somewhere. Okay, go from there. You guys have a great night.